In our last video on permutations, we're going to use the things which we just proved about transpositions to define an interesting property of permutations in general, which is called their parity. So that begins with a definition of odd and even for permutations. And here it is. A permutation is called odd if it can be written as a product of an odd number of transpositions, and even if it can be written as a product of an even number of transpositions. As an example, the identity is always even because you can write the identity permutation as, say, 1, 2 times 1, 2. There it is, visibly a product of an even number of transpositions, namely two transpositions. On the other hand, if you just take the transposition 1, 2 on its own, well, that's visibly a product of one transposition. So this thing is odd. 1, 2, 3, well, we know we can write 1, 2, 3 as 1, 2 composed with 2, 3. So there it is as a product of an even number of transpositions. So this is even. And in fact, more generally, we know for an M cycle, a way to express that M cycle as a product of M minus 1 transpositions. So if you look on the right hand side there, the first index inside the first subscript inside the transpositions goes from 0 to m minus 2. So that's m minus 1 transpositions on the right there. So what that shows is that an is that an M cycle can be expressed as a product of M minus 1 transpositions. So M cycles where M is odd are even, and M cycles where M is even are odd. Or to put that another way, odd length cycles are even, and even length cycles are odd. Okay, moving on. There is a big problem with that, um, with our definition of odd and even, or at least there's a potential for something to be a little bit strange about it. And that is that there are lots of different ways to write a given permutation as a product of transpositions. For example, 1, 2. There's 1, 2 as a product of one transposition itself. But I could also write it as 1, 2 times um, 3, 4 times 3, 4. And I could also write it as 2, 4 times 1, 4 times 2, 4. You can check that that's correct if you like, and in many other ways. So who's to say that I couldn't write the same permutation both as a product of an odd number of transpositions and as a product of an even transposition, even number of transpositions? So here all our expressions seem to have odd numbers of transpositions, but couldn't there be some clever way to write 1, 2 as a product of an even number of transpositions? It's not at all obvious that you couldn't do that. So this theorem, which I've written here, is very much not an obvious theorem. The theorem says that no permutation is both odd and even. So you can't write 1, 2, for example, as a product of an even number of transpositions. And you can't write 1, 2, 3, the three cycle 1, 2, 3, as a product of an odd number of transpositions. That's the content of this theorem. Uh, again, I'm not going to give a proof of this. I think this is the kind of um, proof where it's more helpful to sit and work through it at your own pace than to listen to me read it out loud. So if you'd like to see a proof, you can find one in the types notes where there is a careful proof, uh, at least an outline of a proof, that no permutation is both odd and even. In other words, that you can't write one fixed permutation, both as a product of an odd number of transpositions and as a product of an even number of transpositions. So let's just say C.
online notes. And what you'll see is the proof is really quite creative proof. It actually has to bring in a completely unexpected mathematical object to make the proof work. OK, final slide then. We're going to define the sign of a permutation. Uh, the sign of a permutation S is 1 if S is even and minus 1 if S is odd. And we have a little bit of notation. We write sign brackets S like this to mean the sign of the permutation S. So what the theorem from the last slide says is that sign is actually, it really is a function. If you, if you have a permutation S, then either it's odd, so it's sine is minus 1, or it's even, so it's sine is 1, but not both. So sign really is a genuine function. So you can think of the sign of a permutation in another way as well. Um, you could also think of the sine of S as being minus 1 to the power m minus 1, where uh, sorry, to the power m, where m is the number of transpositions in an expression for S. So as an example here, we know, for example, that 1, 2, 3, that's an even permutation. It's even because you can write it as the product of two transpositions like this. So sine of the permutation 1, 2, 3 will be equal to 1, which is minus 1 to the power 2, 2 being the number of transpositions in this expression for 1, 2, 3 as a product of transpositions. So that's the sign of a permutation. Uh, it turns out to be a really useful concept, um, something which is um, something which is useful in all kinds of different places. And I'm going to prove a useful property of the sine function in this lemma here, which is that for any two permutations s and t, the sine of the composition s t is equal to the sine of s, which is a number, right, minus one or, or one, times the sine of t. And that's actually very easy to see if you just think through the definitions. So if you take your permutation S and you write it as a product S1 up to SM of transpositions, and you take your permutation T and you write it as a product T1 up to TL of some transpositions, then according to this observation we just made on the right of the screen there, the sine of S is minus 1 to the power M, and the sine of T is minus 1 to the power L. But we can get an expression for st as a product of transpositions just by replacing s with its product s1 up to sm of transpositions and t with its product t1 up to tl of transpositions. And what this does is show you that s composed with t can be written as a product of m plus l transpositions. And that means the sine of st is minus 1 to the power m plus l. But according to the exponent laws just for ordinary multiplication, that's minus 1 to the power m times minus 1 to the power l. And minus 1 to the power m is the sine of s. And minus 1 to the power l is the, power, the sine of t. So there we've seen that the sine of st is equal to the sine of s times the sine of t. So that gives us our result on the sine of a product of two permutations. Finally, um, well not quite finally actually, penultimately, the sine of an m cycle is minus 1 to the power m minus 1. And we actually saw this on the very first slide in this lecture. We know that you can write a arbitrary m cycle, a0, a1 up to am minus 1, as the product of the transposition a0, a1, and the product of the transposition a1, a2, all the way up to am minus 2, am minus 1. So that shows you that you can write an m cycle as the product of m minus 1 transpositions. So the sign of that m cycle is just minus 1 to the power m minus 1. That gives us another way of just saying this result, which we actually wrote down before, that 
uh, odd length cycles are even, even length cycles are odd. And my final lemma at the bottom here is that the sign of a permutation S and the sign of its per, the sign of the inverse S inverse are equal to one another. And again, this is really easy to see because if you write your permutation S as the product S1, S2, up to Sm of transpositions, well, if you do that, then you can get the inverse S inverse. You know how the inverse of a composition works, right? The inverse of S is S m to the minus 1 composed with s m minus 1 to the minus 1 all the way down to s1 but your si's are transpositions and the inverse of a transposition like a b is just a b again so all of these transpositions to the power minus 1 well, they're just transpositions again. In fact, they're just the same transpositions written out in the opposite order. So here is the inverse of S as a product of the same number of transpositions as it took to write S. So what we see there is we can write S inverse as a product of the same number of transpositions as it took us to write S, and therefore the sine of S inverse is the same as the sine of S.